Guys, you're about to see the full episode of our little TV show we made called The Smoke Show. Obviously, this isn't a real TV show. It's just something we made, and it's something that we produced for the Cleeter Crew members. So if you subscribe to Cleeter Crew on CletusMcFarlane.com for $100 for the full year, you get all the pay-per-views, and you get access to The Smoke Show, which we have a bunch of episodes coming out on this year. We're going to be doing these Smoke Show episodes on a couple of our big events, and also at a couple smaller events, or even things here at the shop that you guys may request. So the only reason I'm putting this full episode out on YouTube is for all of you to check it out. Hopefully, it will encourage you to subscribe to The Cleater Crew if you do and spend that $100, you get all the pay-per-views, and you get freaking 20 entries for the Tahoe giveaway. So this is a prime opportunity to subscribe. Obviously, we got the Freedom 500 coming up, which your subscription will include that, and everything else within the next 12 months. So YouTube, enjoy this full episode of The Smoke Show. We won't be posting all of these, maybe a couple of these episodes on YouTube, and if we do post them on YouTube, it'll be at least three to four months after it comes out on the Cleater Crew. Enjoy this full episode, but really, you gotta get on the Cleater Crew, guys. What are you doing? All right, guys, enjoy the video. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Bristol Motor Speedway. gentlemen welcome to the smoke show where we're going to take you guys behind the scenes on how we make these crazy events happen in real life there are a lot of work there's a lot of complications a lot of highs and a lot of lows but we're going to show you everything in our new show the smoke show Today we're going to be taking a look at Cletus and Cars and the legendary Bristol 1000, our biggest event to date. So we've been doing Cletus and Cars for about five years now and they're growing exponentially. So we need bigger and bigger venues. Indianapolis was a huge step up for us and when I left there I just felt like I needed more. So we searched out the biggest, baddest stadiums in the country and tried to figure out how we can make a burnout show possible inside one of them. And just looking at aerial photos of Bristol Motor Speedway, it's like it's a giant freedom factory. It literally has hundreds of thousands of seats surrounding a burnout pad that already happens to be there. So made some calls through some friends, got some contact information for some of the management at Bristol Motor Speedway, and they happened to already see the events we've been doing and we're on board to make an event happen. So we flew out just about one year ago, saw the venue, figured out how we were gonna make the event work, talked through the entire process with their management, and then after about six months of negotiation and talking through planning and things like that, we signed the paperwork to rent Bristol Motor Speedway. All right, well now we signed the paperwork to put on a massive event and a huge stadium. We can't let the managers down on what we promised them at Bristol Motor Speedway. So let's jump over to the Freedom Factory and see what George and the boys are working on. You gotta move this here vehicle that no longer runs to get a vehicle out from behind it to strip it to get a new vehicle for the Bristol 1000 ready. Whose car would that be? George's. Hey. You see here, this is one of our older cars. As you can tell, it's a little wreck. What I'm doing, every big race, I take off all the good stuff so we don't have to keep buying new stuff. And we reuse it. So we can reuse the nitrous bottles, we can reuse the nitrous lines, the brackets, and then um, we'll reuse these wings here. Aerodynamics, oh, see, that's me right there. That's a little George, I'm big George. So we're taking all this stuff out of here because right behind me here you can see they're stripping down a brand new car fresh from the auction block. The boys right here are stripping everything out of it, all the interior, spare tires, everything out the trunk. We'll put new Nitto tires on all the wheels. We'll put a nitrous kit, a roll cage, a seat belt, window net, all the safety stuff. We go through a good couple dumpsters full of Crown Vic stuff, but if anyone's looking for chrome, 
Crown Vic hubcaps. We got them by the bucket load. Now this one will go back into the graveyard in case you need any good parts off of it. Potentially sell it. I might take the hood, put it up in my museum, aka my garage. But other than that, perfectly good parts car. She got overheated. You can see the radiator got a little bent in. But other than that, man, that was a good car. Once cars have been stripped by George and the boys, we head over to the shop where Zach and Ty are installing the cages and giving the cars alignment. So we got four weeks to the event, one week to testing. We're gonna go down to, um, to well, up to Bristol with a couple cars, test them, make sure everything works. So we got to get at least 20 cars prepped before we go out next week. We have to ship 10 cars out that way. So what I'm doing right now is we're stripping all the cars. Now that the cars are all getting stripped, new tires put on, then they get brought to me. When they get brought to me, I take these pre-vent, pre-notched uh, cage kits and weld them up and throw them in the car. And then the next step from there is gonna be going ahead and throwing like seats and harnesses in them, window nets, nitrous kits. There's a lot that goes in these things. They don't seem like there's that much until you start going through the processes, but. These, uh, these kits right here, I drew them in CAD, and then I sent them out uh, to cagekits.com. Our buddy Rob Parsons cuts these and notches them and bends them for us. So if you look, they actually have little etched in marks where the tubes line up. So all I have to do is grab them, stick this bar in, and they line up like on the money perfect. So I'll weld that in. And we'll throw this main hoop in the car, weld that all up, and then I'll throw the do door bars in. The door bars line up with these, zap those real quick, and then it's on to the next step. Got it down to about 30 to 45 minutes a car, depending. Sometimes you hit a little snag here or there. Yesterday I did 10 cars, and then today I'm shooting for another 10. So I'm hoping in two days I can get the 20 cars welded up, and then we can go on to the next steps, and I can kind of help jump on and figure out what's next. All the cars before have about that much tire contact on the track, so they wear out the right fronts really fast. So now we've got camber in it and a straight alignment, so when it goes around the banks, the tire will be banked to the bank. And then we're adding a spring stiffener over there on the passenger front, which will stiffen up that so it doesn't push down so hard. Basically your car is going to be sitting, like the front left will be down going into a corner so the car will be wanting to turn left before you even do. And it should make it where we can get through a race without a pit stop of tires. Like this is a full inch off. It's not gonna work. <laughs> this will be the first time we've actually gone this far with them. Now the tie is finished installing the cages and Zach has given the cars state of the art alignments. The cars are ready to be taken back over to the Freedom Factory where James is putting in the harnesses seats, the NOS nitro systems, Nitto tires. At this point, the cars are ready to race. After the Indy 800, where we blew a lot of front right tires and ran a few cars out of fuel during the race, we decided we need to prepare ourselves a little bit better for the Bristol 1000. So not only did we stagger up the alignments on the cars, ran different tire pressures, spring stiffeners, and other things like that that really helped the cars get through the corner better. We took them all the way up to Bristol to make sure that these changes we were making were actually gonna work, and turns out, they freaking rip. Fort Worth, now, point 30, point 12, passing a 10,000 for 17,000. Five minutes, eight, five, zero, one, three, four, four. to be a magazine on Bristol, Tennessee Motor Speedway. This is what the cover of it would look like. Right here. Nice, dude. This is 
stadium. This is not a small hometown track, so everything's gigantic. Um, the pad's huge. The audience perspective is just totally different. So we go up in the stands, it looks like it's a 20 by 20 pad. We're like, no, that's 100 by 100. So um, we're just trying to wrap our head around that. Uh, logistics wise, yeah, there's a little bit more, but by the time you break it down, you know, it's all the same. Yeah. So each thing takes a little bit more, but uh, we're not we're not scared. We're ready for it. We're excited. We think we're going to crush it. Fans always show up. They always crush it. Never let us down. So uh, we're super excited, man. We're pumped. Yeah. It's going to be the best. So we had Kevin from KSR Performance, Side by Side Blog, Roman Atwood, Brad DeBerdy, Vice Crip Garage, Goon Squad. They all showed up to take some test laps as well. We wanted as much input as possible from the drivers, see how the cars were performing, and we wanted them to get some laps and feel the track out. And it's just, it's only an advantage to show up to the testing day. Almost immediately, J.H. slams into the wall, totaling a crown pick. Oh! Oh! Oh, brother! Now in J.H.'s defense, the crown Vic blew a coolant line. One of the passages on the top of the intake broke off. He got coolant under his tires, went up and slammed into the wall. Oh! Nothing I could do, dude. You got coolant under the tires. Do. The rules were you got to run three laps on foot now. Does it, does it matter on time? Wait, the car's not totaled, is it? The car's totaled. The car's totaled. It's totaled, brother. <laughs> Intake man, broke. Water 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 he has been known to crash a car, but... Figured out why JH came with us on this trip. Uh, he wanted to get total in a car out of the way now, instead of during the race. He's usually about, you know, 50, 60 laps in, he takes out a car. Figured, you know what, let me get this over with now. Two laps in, practice, boom, done. Let's go ask a real You're driver not. what the track felt like. Idiot, dude. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> this was mechanical failure. You tried to kill me? The management at Bristol was looking at us like, what have we had agreed to? And I was trying to assure them, this is no big deal. This is just an issue that we didn't foresee. Let us take a look. So we figured JH's car was a fluke deal. We keep blowing the welds on the intake. Now the piston rings are going to be fried. And now I owe him a 10 second car. <laughs> Another one bites the dust, that and like they break. said, Bristol <coughs> will bite you. I broke it. Give it her hell. Another one down. Another one down. Another one bites the dust. <laughs> well, turns out it happened to several of our testing cars that day where they blew coolant lines right at the attachments on the intake. So that's when we made the decision to get with Summit Racing, get a bunch of intakes off of their website for the Crown Vicks and we swapped all 27 cars that we brought up to Bristol with brand new intake manifolds. Also, while we were testing Crown Vicks, we were testing Stadium Super Trucks. At this point, we already had that deal locked in so that we could bring the trucks out, put on an even more epic show for those of you who watched. And we wanted to make sure the track kind of worked. You gotta make sure these trucks can flow right, you know? They don't like to turn as much as they like to jump, so we wanted to make the track really fast, make, you know, a couple turns just for some live action, let some passing happen see where the jumps were gonna fit. You know, at first we had two jumps on the back straight. We had to eliminate that, go down to one, put the jump, you know, in another spot, and it worked perfectly. It's like, Bristol was designed for burnouts, Crown Vicks, and stadium trucks. You're hauling ass on it, back The track, dude, the track's meant for this. It was meant for stadium trucks. <laughs> it's, I love this track so much. After we did a few laps in the truck, you know, I had an idea. Well, someone put that rig. Viper out there. Let me jump that rig. I figured we'd be able to jump the Viper with ease, and the Goon Squad guys were completely in from the moment I asked. No. Turns out we cleared the Viper by a mile, so we had to do what every man would do. We backed the Viper up. We backed it up some more, jumped it again close to the landing point. Or, you know, we called it and said we probably shouldn't wreck this Viper and this stadium truck at the same time. We did another test session and did some testing of the Colossus TV. 
Then it was time to pack up and head back to Florida. Yeah! The testing went really well. We learned a lot about the cars and some of the problems we were having right off the bat. Thankfully, some hardcore driving by my boys revealed those issues, and now we gotta get to work to get them ready for the Bristol 1000. So guys, finally the week of the event in Bristol. We're just trying to wrap up the cars, and Roman Atwood's burnout car with the original engine it had in it blew up. It lost oil pressure because of an issue with the oil filter installation jack stand. So we got to work to try and find a old Mopar engine, which is super hard, but we found a small block Mopar late model roundy round racing engine, slapped that puppy in and she freaking rips. allowed. It's got some potential, we'll call it. As soon as we put it out here, we're going to put the tire spin on it. Then it'll yeah, show what it's got. What it yes. That's how it ran. That's a good one. Hey. My old uh, shop teacher is always go, Dude, that guy, <laughs> diehard Mopar man. That guy? You know, once we got her running and sounding good, we had to take her out for a rip. two ways it's either gonna go or blow so hopefully it goes because uh, we're out of time Alright guys, you know where we're at in front of racing. Status of the shop right now is she's looking rough, okay? It's looking beat up in here. We just got corn cob off the lift, thankfully, just ripped it in the parking lot. It absolutely shredded. So excited about that. Didn't want to let my boy Roman Atwood down. So we got a late model engine for it and it freaking rips. Did its job. We got this thing out the door with a freaking gnarly uh, 340 small block mo party on it. We got Toast up and running. Toast is already in the toter home. The Dale truck's already in the toter home. Mystery Machine's already on a semi on its way to Bristol. Chad's Mustang blew up. Garza's Miata sitting there ready to go. Killer Bee's sitting here ready to be fired up. White Trash, the truck, the last thing on our list is on the lift right now getting a new Brawler Series engine from Texas Speed. Neighbor is good to go. Got to put some fuel in that. Actually, already put some fuel in that. Literally got to load that on the trailer. Sam is tuned up, looking good. Yeah, Sam says it's time to make some smoke. So we're actually ahead of schedule for Bristol, which is amazing. Really excited. We'll see you guys there. Well, here's good old Rodney, twin turbo, 5.3 junkyard truck. And I just so happened to be, sl yeah, well, I was, I was hooning a little bit and I blew the rear end out of it. So as you can see, it's jacked up right now because we just put us a nine inch, quick performance, nine inch rear end under this unit. And uh, it's going to get down with the business. I got a drive shaft getting made right now. It'll be ready tomorrow, which is uh, about two hours before the truck gets here to pick up all the burnout cars. So really walking on thin ice here. But the truck is running like a dream. I mean, it's running so good it blew the rear end out of it. So there's that. And uh, it's just ready to burn some rubber. That's what this thing was built to do. That's what it does. It burns rubber, it melts tires, and it lets bald eagles fly. One time it let a turbo go flying. So all in all, super excited for this weekend. Bristol 1000, Bristol, Tennessee, and uh, just gonna get this truck finished up. We got all the cars finished up, and I'll see you guys in Bristol, brother. So in the toter here, we've got Toast on the bottom here, because everybody knows she's the leaker. We got the Dale truck up top, We've got the spark up front just in case George brings something and we got to beat him in a race real quick, you know. You always got to have that. On the top over here in our fourth car spot, 
it is full of merch, the most merch we've ever taken, I think, to an event. And we're gonna load down me, my co-pilot, Sam, he's always gotta be up front with me. You got Taylor, you got Ty, and then you've got our interns. We're all going six deep in the toter home, and it should be a pretty smooth ride. We're gonna travel throughout the night so we can get there early Thursday to get all our stuff done, but everything should be great. Smooth ride, five whole miles a gallon. We'll be there in no time. So while all this madness is happening in the shop, the always hauling guys had arrived at the Freedom Factory to pick up some Crown Vicks. All in all, we had five semi-loads of Crown Vicks and burnout cars go up to Bristol. We had 50 of our cars on the road to make this event happen. Hello, Ripper. We got the uh, Ford truck up front with the enclosed trailer. We got the Defender in it, the 6x6 Defender. We got two golf carts, Freedom Frank and our boy Allen's. Tomorrow we're leaving at 6. It's about a 13-hour drive, I believe, so haul up there, be there by 8, unload a couple things, and hit the hay and hit it hard on Friday. And you got to love that the Always Hauling guys show up with semi-trucks that are cooler than the actual cars they're hauling. Look at how clean these things are. And the Always Hauling guys take such good care of our cars. They're driving custom cars up and down their trucks all day long, and they do a great job. My name is Billy with Always Haul and Auto Transport. We're out of Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. We have on the road, I believe, eight trucks right now. The truck's a 2019 Peterbilt 389. Uh, it's got a 3406E 2WS Caterpillar motor in it. Uh, it's a glider, 18-speed uh, transmission, uh, 293 rears. It's a 80-footer between truck and trailer. We can haul up to nine cars on it, depending on the size. Out of all the trucks we have, pretty much all of our trucks are custom-built trucks, all gliders, all Caterpillar motors. It's top-of-the-line equipment. Everything that we own is top-of-the-line. Uh, no corners cut on anything. We go up here and finish loading these cars. Uh, start heading out this evening and see you guys in Bristol. Gotta be tight, man. Gotta be tight. Now the trucks are loaded, the toter is loaded, it's time to head up to Bristol and make this event happen. Bristol's amazing to talk about. Everyone knows Bristol's Bristol baby, but when you walk over the hill, you see the bank turns, you see the 100,000 plus seats. It is like no other racetrack in the country. Bristol is its own incredible vibe. It's insane. It's something everyone should feel in their lifetime. Thursday was our first day up at Bristol. Some of the guys hadn't been there yet, so they're taking it all in, but we still had a lot of work to do on the cars. We had to unload the cars, which were full of supplies, spare tires, tools, things like that. We had already shipped a couple of the cars up with the testing cars for Bristol, so we had to do intake manifolds on them, some fresh tires on some cars, fixing random issues, pulling cars off the trailer, and they've got a misfire now, just from riding on a trailer to Bristol. So we had to thrash Thursday and Friday just to get ready for Saturday. All right, so you guys know we came up here with a truckload of test VIX and some new Crown VIX for this race. Uh, since then, we made a decision to do intake manifolds on all of them, so we got the boys back behind me. They're putting the last of the intakes on the cars we already have delivered to Bristol and getting them ready for the race. All the other cars are ready to go. Intake manifolds, top of a few new tires from, you know, Nitto tires. Race equip, safety equipment, roll cages done by Ty, you know, the whole works are done. Just getting the last few buttoned up to get them out there for Sunday for race day, Bristol 1000. Lots 
of, uh, lots of mice in these old Crown Vicks. Mainly every car you can expect there to be a nest like you have here or a bunch of rat poop. So this is the most important part here. The main killer of these Crown Vicks is when you get a little bit of coolant on these, so you gotta make sure there's absolutely no moisture in these. Brake clean, just the best way to do it with a little bit of air. A couple other odd and end things on Thursday. We had to get the toter inside the track, which was a whole project in and of itself to not destroy the trailer coming down the bank turn. We shot the Dale truck doing some laps for the live stream testing and got that sucker dialed in. That was pretty much a wrap for Thursday. Beautiful, getting all the cars unloaded, all the burnout cars on here, of course, here at Bristol, and it is going to be one more day of it today. So, folks, we got the big show for you today, and right now, as you can see, getting ready to lower this down, bring out the JH's car, truck, right, I don't say car, but his truck, got the rest coming up here, LS George is waiting on his to unload it, and in we go. Guys, you know, for any show, you gotta have stuff looking good. Now, in these cars here, we want them especially looking good. We got our fans off, it's gonna be sitting right here. So when we make the laps on these things for them, the little show, that's not looking good for the fans. So we're starting up here at the front. Start actually with the Dale truck up there. That all wiped down with, of course, wouldn't you know, this. And it comes with its own towel. I just had some extra towels here, blue. Start with the truck up there. Come back down to the toast here, we got it done. This one, I don't know, this is going to be tough to do anything with this one here. So we skip it, come down to the corn cob, if you will, and give it a quick wipe down, then the others, and just another 30 or 40 minutes, have all of them done, ready for the show. So we're out here just doing a final once over on the cars, making sure all our safety belts are in, our uh, crotch straps are in, and all the seats are tight, so these drivers are safe during the race. We don't want any problems to be a fast track here. So if they hit a wall, they're gonna actually need every strap they have because it will be a hard hit. I'm telling you, it's Bristol, baby. It's gonna be wild. As they went on, more and more of our drivers and personalities showed up. Out here, repping Taco Bell. <laughs> And Bass Pro Shop. And Bass Pro Shop. Looking for a sponsor. All right, guys, midday Friday. We got the Colossal Point old videos giving us spirit. I'm getting fired up, but I'm most fired up that our announcer, Nick the Savage, is here getting warmed up for the weekend. Woo! You know the deal. Click clack. Daddy's back, baby. We're in Bristol. We're with the man, the myth, the legend. Well, it's not James. But anyway, we're still here. Look, right over there, brother. Legends of Bristol. We're out here sending it for Dale. Praise hell, praise Dale, brother. You know the deal. JH Diesel literally did not finish his truck before he put it on the trailer. So he brought tools and parts with him. And JH is out in the parking lot working on his burnout truck while we're all inside preparing for the show. All right, so we're out here in uh, what we're calling parking lot C, competitor parking. We got a whole fleet of competitors and the burnout cars out here getting ready. Got some trucks we haven't seen. We got, of course, you know, like burnt toast, skids for kid guys out here. JH Diesel trying to build his truck in the parking lot right now. It's looking like it's going to be a fired up event come tomorrow, please, some cars here at Bristol. No, 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 grab some battery, or this jumper cable. This Diesel just half built this truck in the parking lot. And the George, battery's dead. George, quit playing my wires, we're good. Jump box says you're done. He's saying yeah, hit good. the cables. So, we just need to get jumper diesel, cables diesel on it. Stuff. Oh, oh, damn. Or it's wired to the starter. 
Then at the very end of the day, Robbie Gordon and his crew show up. We're already about ready to leave the place. We got all our stuff set up. Robbie and them show up and we had to kind of test out the course because it wasn't totally finalized from testing and Robbie had to give his input. Well, the trucks weren't ready to be unloaded yet, so we had to use the Dale truck to feel out the course for the stadium trucks. Obviously couldn't take it off a jump, but we were ripping. And then the Diesel Brothers showed up, so between them and Robbie Gordon, I had to show the boys how a burnout was done. This is actually my first skid inside Bristol Motor Speedway. <laughs> Here we go, Saturday, the day of Cleason Cars, the biggest Cleason Cars we've ever had. We had all the cars, all the people, all the amazing fans, all the tires we were gonna kill. It was finally go time. The crews fired up, we had to meet with all the drivers for the burnout contest, and we had to instate some new rules. A two minute time limit on burnouts. We had a problem with, you know, guys who just couldn't get it done staying out there for five minutes, that's over. You get two minutes to pop your tires, you know, and then just going into other rules like no tire fires, things like that. And we also announced that this would be the first competition that Jack Stand and I were fully competing in. So James and I aren't on the sidelines anymore. Now that we have real judges, James and I are competing for the prize and the money at the Cars Cars Bristol. After the driver's meeting, we took a little peek outside. I have never seen so many people lined up, fired up for a Cletus and Cars event. From starting with an event that only had several hundred people show up to five years ago or so, it was freaking incredible to see this many people fired up to see this event that we've been working so hard on for so long. It really in that moment all came so real that like, we got a lot of people here, we gotta put on an amazing show or they'll never come back. There was actually so many people that we opened the gates early and began the pit party. We had this idea to do a pit party for about three hours to let people come on the track, see the cars, experience the bank, and meet influencers and personalities. And it was truly a one of a kind experience. It's an absolute awesome turnout. The weather is beautiful. We got Jackson and Jimmy signing autographs. All the cars are on display. It's going to be an amazing weekend at Bristol. This is our first time to Cleveland Cars at Bristol. Dude, it's amazing. We've got a bunch of people out here, dude. It's definitely going to be a sin day today. We have stadium super trucks, burnouts with our friends, and we've got the Crown Brick race tomorrow. It is the biggest event we've ever had, and it's going to be so fun. I'm so stoked to be here. This is Bristol, baby. Kind of a big deal, dude. Tons of people here. Great turnout, great weather. People everywhere, the excitement here. You just feel it, the energy is wild. <laughs> and in the middle of all of this, JH got his burnout truck running and the driver's meeting for the stadium trucks happened. 
We closed out the pit party and it was time to do qualifying for the stadium trips. I ended up qualifying seventh place, so I started in the middle of the pack. Didn't qualify as good as I wanted to, but starting in the middle of the pack is, is not bad. You don't want to be first and you don't want to be last. And as you guys know, Stadium Trucks does do an inverted field for qualifying, so put me towards the front of the pack and puts all the fast guys behind you who drive like maniacs. So you gotta drive cautious out there in them Stadium Trucks or you'll end up on your lid like I did in Nashville. First time ever, we kicked off pleasing cars with a wedding. Now, I'll be honest, I am not, what's it called? I'm, I, I'll be honest, I am not ordained, but these people asked me to marry them, so I said, absolutely. Why would I not marry you? Forget the laws, dude. We don't need those where we're going. They're getting married right now. Oh, you're officiating it? I'm, yes. Reverend McFarland? Oh boy, let's hear it for baby. Leader. Welcome, everyone. All right. Y'all didn't know you were in for a wedding today, did you? By the bald eagles vested in me by the state of Tennessee, I now pronounce you husband and wife. You may kiss your bride. So I married this fine man and woman right there on the burnout pad in Bristol. Then he tried to do a burnout, unfortunately had his traction control on, so he had to leave the burnout pad. Came back later, did the burnout, which went really well. So, tough break, but he came through for his girl. Open burnout contest was insane. We had 40 cars in it, far more than we've ever done before. Bristol showed out, people from all over the country came out. There were some insane burnouts and overall, an LSA supercharged Jeep Wrangler won it. This guy absolutely ripped it. Normally he stops and goes into four wheel drive. He didn't stop, just two wheel drive, killed the burnout pit, went to every inch of it, just destroyed it. Our judges named him the winner. The Napa truck got second. That truck, I don't know if I've ever seen it before, but it came out and absolutely killed it. And on top of the wedding 
and the epic burnout that we had an engagement. So, you know, Gleason Cars is just a very intimate place to be, I guess. Then we get into stadium trucks. At this point in my career, I've never finished a stadium truck race, so all I'm trying to do is go out there and finish in front of the people. Freaking Max Gordon runs into the back of my truck, blows my tire, so I'm stranded. They changed my tire, I finished the race, but two laps down. So where does this put me? Right in second place for the race on Sunday, but the Saturday race was still awesome. The jumps still weren't placed in the perfect spot, so we knew we were gonna change them for Sunday. Then Gavin got the win, who happens to be the guy who rolled my truck over on top of me in Nashville. Freaking Gavin, dude, unreal. Right, right. One, one short move, move. one short move. Keep, keep it, keep it, keep it short. short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ready? Ready? Three, Three two, two, one. one. Perfect. 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 James goes out in white trash, puts on one hell of a burnout. So I'm like, all right, I'll show this man what's up. I hop in neighbor, back up way farther than I should have. Went into the burnout pad, hot, to say the least. And absolutely totaled the car. I mean, looking at the car immediately after the wreck, we knew neighbor was in trouble. But after it, you know, I calmed down, I remembered that body shop guys are insane and that I knew if we put neighbor on a frame machine, he'd probably be all right. On to burnout rivals. Now listen, <laughs> what I told you guys earlier today is that we hired judges for Cletus in cars so that we can compete. So everything is independent of, our, of us. In second place in Burnout Rivals, we have Vice Grip Garage. In first place in Burnout Rivals, we have Jack Stan Jimmy.
This one kind of hurts. And a pro, burnout pros. Again, guys, independent judging. Second place for $1,000, Cletus McFarlane. <laughs> First place, $10,000. Berkeley finish off Bristol. Cletus and Cars out here in this beautiful facility. Shredding tires, doing it for Dale. Winning trophies, baby. Told you earlier I came to win and I did that. All right, Bristol's over. Bringing Jackson one. Woo! Rivals and pro. Independent judging, like I said. We discussed at the driver's meeting. We asked all the drivers, you know, what they thought. We said, we're going to be competing this year. The judges, they're going to do their thing. No one disagreed. James crushed it. He got two trophies and some cash. And that's a wrap, Bristol. The next morning, we really saw the carnage. The cars were wrecked. There was a mess of rubber everywhere. Everyone was tired. The place was destroyed and it all started coming back together. We were picking up the pieces, but we had to get these Crown Vicks ready because we had almost 30 drivers showing up expecting a good car, and we had thousands of amazing people showing up expecting an amazing race. We had another pit party, and the drivers got their cars decorated up, made them look beautiful, race ready for that Bristol 1000 kickoff. Just out here church up this Crown Victoria to stick out in the crowd. Give me some custom color M numbers on here, a little bit of graffiti. Man, I'm pretty jacked. I know this guy is super jacked. So jacked that he hasn't eaten anything for four days. I ain't eating nothing until I win this race. That's when it's time. Weight savings. This is smart. <laughs> it's definitely smart. I went the opposite direction. This I've is... been eating nonstop. <laughs> <laughs> eating for me. This is so incredible out here. The energy of this place is unbelievable. This facility is unbelievable. I'm just happy to be a part of it. You know? During the pit party for the Bristol 1000, we had our driver's meeting. And it was probably the longest driver's meeting we've ever had because this track is so much faster and more dangerous than any track we've been on before. But it was awesome to see all the familiar faces and we had some great discussions about how we were gonna operate the race. My boy Doug from Motion Raceworks asked me if he could use the Dale truck as the pace vehicle for the Bristol 1000. And Doug, that was a great idea because it was just beautiful. Seeing the old Dale truck out ripping in front of the whole pack of Crown Vicks. It was probably the fastest vehicle on track. I don't know if in the history of racing if the pace vehicle's ever been faster than the actual race cars. So that was cool. Second stadium trucks race went way better for me. I started in second place after having my tire blown in the previous day's race. I led the race for 14 of 15 laps, but because the race was so fast around the banked oval, we'd come into that straightaway and just have to nail the brakes and hold them for a while. My brakes were getting hotter and hotter and I could feel them fading. I'm on the last freaking lap and I just went in too fast. I had the boys riding my bumper. We kind of pushed into the corner. I couldn't get the thing turned around. Freaking Max passes me and Stout ends up winning the stadium truck race. However, I finished the stadium truck race and I got on the podium. I got a third place trophy. So I was pretty excited. Now, 
It's finally time. The moment everyone's been waiting for, the moment we've been working the hardest for, the race, the Bristol 1000. 100 laps around Bristol Motor Speedway. The race has now been months in the planning. So much work, so much time invested. The drivers are all here, it's time to make it happen. We're on the hardest track we've ever been on and the cars are just as ready as they can ever be. Let's see how this freaking goes. Oh, I'm pretty amped up. I like going out towards the beginning for qualifying, just to get done, get it over. Let's see where we land, let's go race. I am now one with the car. I am plugged in electrically, physically. So, if you're here, It's so meta because I'm watching myself on the big TV here and we're in the middle. I just got out of the car qualifying. Man, it, that thing grips up pretty good. This is wild, dude. It's Bristol. Like, I'm getting goosebumps. It's surreal. Um, you know, we created this and without the fans, we wouldn't have it. You know, we put on a, an event that is unorthodox in the middle of the mountains and people showed up. You know, that, that speaks volumes of the, uh, the fan base and uh, very fortunate to have the opportunity. And I think we're going to crush it, man. Day one, we crush it. Day two, we're about to turn it up. And uh, this is just indescribable, man. I'm excited. Dude, it's insane. The energy is like nothing we've ever seen before. It's so cool. It's just really cool to see. Creepy out there, man. I didn't realize it's like a roller coaster. You got to keep it to the floor almost all the way around. This track is fast, and you barely have to turn. Those banks are a huge game changer, man. Totally different setup from Indy and Freedom Racker. I'm stoked. I'm so fired up right now. I can't wait to get rolling. About to go down, baby. It feels great, dude. It's, it's, the car's better than I am. I guarantee that. Let's do it. We did five groups of about three or four cars in each qualifying group, and it went pretty well. But then the cars started having some issues. Some very random stuff was happening. Just weird stuff like throttle bodies going bad or a coil pack and things like that. But we got through qualifying. We lined up three wide around the track and made laps with American flags hanging out our windows which was just awesome, you know, kind of just representing the country to the maximum, you know, bunch of cars racing around the Bristol Motor Speedway with American flags. It was beautiful. And on top of all that, Spence rips a national anthem on his electric guitar that left people crying. It was so beautiful. It gave me the goosebumps. It was amazing. <laughs> We had a couple cautions and our boy Jackson fell out of the race pretty early, blew the engine in his Crown Vic, but that still left 25 Crown Vicks out on the track ripping. And right after James got knocked out, a freaking massive wreck broke out. The biggest crash in a Cletus McFarlane race in the history of us doing these events. Oh, look at that. Nick Seuss oh. about to get spun out, but Kevin, Kevin hard contact at 
to turn two. Our current leaders. Oh, the wow. Just go hard into the wall. We are. Oh, wow. Lots of carnage. Lots of carnage oh, here. Boy. My Lord. Coming out of turn two. Coming for KSR. happened i heard caution in my ear and then i never even lifted i never hit the brakes i just plowed straight into somebody i'd love to find out who so i can say i'm sorry but i'm pretty sure they were just sitting in the middle of the track when i came off the turn it was gnarly totally gnarly Five of which were absolutely totaled with Nick Seuss and Haley Deegan at the front of it. Kevin Smith aggressively got into the back of Nick Seuss's car. It caused him to get loose and unfortunately Nick was caught up in a bad accident. Went up in the wall nose first taking his car fully into the air just from the front impact. Thankfully, all the drivers were okay. Kevin comes up to me immediately. He's like, dude, I caused that wreck. I can't believe I did that. We're all like in shock trying to figure this out. It's the first time we've ever red flagged one of our races and we had a lot of carnage to pick up, but the team got it all picked up and we got the cars back going. <laughs> I mean, off the record, but on lap 52, I was having issues with my car going into limp mode. So I decided to spin out. I spun out and stayed in the track because I knew no one was behind me. I was going so freaking slow anyway. Gave me the opportunity to shut her down, fire her back up, and she started running perfect again. And then, about 14 laps later, she threw a rod through the side of the block. The first time I have ever thrown a rod out of a Crown Vic 4.6 liter V8. Even after putting gas in the engine, then it didn't throw a rod. But I threw a rod at the Bristol 1000 because it's the Bristol 1000. You know guys, today was really dialed in and then it turned into a, a shit show pretty darn quick. <laughs> 
But you came to a Cleese event understanding it could end up being a shit show, right? How are you feeling after an insane crash? I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm good, man, but it's part of racing. Rubbin's racing, as they say. Yeah, did you and uh, Kevin have a little scuffle in the pits or what? No, it was clean. <laughs> <laughs> it was clean. All in all, Brad DeBerdy wins the first ever Bristol 1000. He's a great guy, and that guy did 200 laps in his simulator around Bristol Motor Speedway in Crown Vic the night before. So Brad did put in the most work. He probably deserved the win. He had a couple podiums earlier in the season, so for him to get the Bristol 1000, that was a big deal. His dad was psyched up too. JH coming in third place, and the Hunter front guys finishing up front as well. What an epic way to end the race. A huge crash definitely brought us down, but we fought through it, put on an incredible race, and I think you guys who all watched the live stream enjoyed the heck out of it. So overall, Cletus and Cars Bristol and the Bristol 1000 were a massive success. Who's your lap, bro? You got it. Unbelievable, look at this. Can we get this on the, look at that guys. Get in, zoomed in on that. Look at this. Hey, Brad, look at your tire, brother. Dude, the DeBerdy's getting the W. These Nitto tires are absolutely unreal. Look at your tire. <laughs> uh, I, don't, I can't even explain it because as a parent, it is like the most coolest, fun, you know, better than anything. Man, thank you so much, seriously. You're in five, this, I mean, look at this. I mean, is this the funnest or what? Woo! All right, and Brad, take, look at this trophy, brother. Dude. Look at that. I'm so proud of you, man. You came out here, you put on the show, you get the trophy. What a day. We just the won. Car? We just won the Bristol 1000. The steel cords are hanging out of the Oh, car. I felt it. Well, on the yellow lap, I felt like da 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 Oh, I was... <laughs> Dude, I am just so beyond blessed to be here. This was so much fun. Thank you, Garrett, for even inviting me out here. Me and my dad, we're always having fun, but I'll tell you one thing. We've been fighting since we got here, the very first race, and we needed that. That was that was fun. I, I just want to seriously thank the whole crew, all the sponsors on all the car, just everyone that's here. I mean, this... I hate to say it, but it's more fun than NASCAR. Yeah. My team at the Freedom Factory, you guys did an amazing job running this event. The team at McFarland Racing, you guys killed it on the automotive front, getting so many cars ready, over 50 cars on the road, and the merch crew coming out, putting up tents, making it all happen. And on top of that, my family being there for me, my parents, my brother, sister, just out here working, and the whole crew, Project Prime, just going hard guys at no breaks doing the live stream it was a huge pool of people i would guess well over 100 people on our side of the event and then bristol's crew just ran the event awesome supported us every step of the way we needed water bottles mid-event and the management in bristol's like running around eating water bottles it was all hands on deck and i think we actually impressed a stadium by filling up one quarter of it. We did good, we did good, but next year I'd like to rent at least one half of it. So that'll be it for the Bristol 1000 and Cleveland Cars on this episode of The Smoke Show. Thanks for watching, do it for Dale. We will freaking see you later. I wanna know, how about that grand finale? Was this not the event? The rain held off on the thing, the stands, oh my goodness, the fans were unbelievable on it, and did we have some racing? And one wreck took out about eight or 10 competitors, but hey, it's part of racing on it. But it was a very, very good time, and I congratulate those guys for winning on the thing. What a job.